Yo, welcome guys to the fourth video of the series and today we're going to take a look at all skill specializations for the staff. We are starting first with the Serial Firebombs, which is a skill that once you activate it, you can reactivate it again. It also applies burning damage and you can make it so it is castable. We're going to take a look at that in-game right now. So now you can see I can cast it of up to two seconds. If it would be normal, this is what it looks like. Boom, and now you can see you can cast it again and again and again. You do have the option to make it so you can cast those things while moving. Extremely valuable for PvP. Not that really useful for PvE because there you're mostly standing still and only have to dodge once in a while. You can make it so the damage is actually also in the three meter radius right here the three meter radius is only for applying burn here you can actually make it so the actual damage is also an aoe attack you can make it so the bombs are traveling faster this is also really important for pvp and you can make it so the casting time um, becomes removed but this cannot be used if you're having focused fire bombs on see then it will cry out let me show you what it looks like now we can see it's going onto the others and I can just go and recast it three times. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. Next up, we are having the Frost Smoke. That is basically the escape skill of the staff players. Does apply a debuff as well of 14% and it applies a frost stack and frost debuffs another 5% movement speed. So in total, this is a 19% movement speed debuff against the enemy. Let me show you quickly what it looks like without any additions. So you will go backwards. This one will slow the enemy and you can keep pounding your skills and you have successfully created a gap to your attacker. Now you do have the option to turn that frost thing into a fire skill. Then it will apply burn to the enemy. You have the option so this gets actually casted on a, on a location. And you have the option that it will deal bonus damage. So let me show you first uh, what the burn thing looks like. So you go back, now you're applying the burn here. Now the designated location, I will go leave a little bit. Now you can choose it, cast, and then you will do an AOE damage onto that range. But you're not teleporting anymore. I think since um, the staff players don't have that much like mobility, I would personally never use um, the burning smoke screen. I would always use the CC and I would always use the jump. Maybe you can do the bonus damage, but overall this is like not a lot. So I would actually keep that skills clean and do recommend not using any of the skill specializations. Next up, we are having Inner Peace. This is a self-regeneration version where you can get 400% mana regen for 6 seconds. And if you are wet, then it will be increased by another 40%. You can do make it. So this is a 5%, 5 meter radius and you will be dealing an AOE damage while you're doing it. You can also make it so while you're doing it, you're immune to CC. You can make it so the duration is a bit longer. So basically, if we are taking a look at this, you're able to not get CC'd and stand in enemies casting this. The Ice Spear is dealing a bunch of damage, has an 80% chance to apply a movement speed debuff of 51%. So it works well if you're using Frost Smoke Screen and follow it up with an Ice Spear, then the attacker can almost not reach you unless he has like a gap close ready by himself. You do have the option to turn that into a skill that is shooting 8 Ice Arrows at the same time. That is interesting. And you can turn it from a move speed to an actual bind then also the gap close of the enemy wouldn't be working anymore and you can boost the damage. Now, there's something important to note here. When you are having a skill like Ice Spear in the current form, you will see it's one attack. 
Now, there, let's do an X course on how bonus damage works in the game. Now, I have only then done one attack. So the bonus damage will be applied on an attack. So let's say I have 100 damage and have 20 bonus damage, my attack will deal 120 damage. If I have the same attack, and that attack attacks 5 times for 20 damage, and we have 20 bonus damage, then for each of those attacks, the bonus damage will be applied, and my attack now deals 200 damage, and not 120. So this means that the ice skill that hurls into the 8 one is actually really valuable if you're stacking bonus damage on your gear, and we will see that there's other ways uh, how staff users can now utilize bonus damage. So it's not only limited now that bonus damage works on Espo and Dagger for the um, offhand weapon attack chance. I think bonus damage will also be viable now for staff if you're going in a multiple consecutive hits build. Now let's talk about high focus. It's um, either increasing your personal cooldown by 30% and movement speed um, increase by 22% for 12 seconds, or you can make it, do it to all the party members, but then the effects are reduced by 66%, means it's only 10% cooldown and 7% movement speed. You can also add, this is important, add max damage here. So the max base damage of your weapon will increase, having lots of critical hit chance, that is valuable. But also, here with the last one, you can change the effects, cooldown speed and move speed for hit and evasion. So this last one is not added, this is actually a change. So this is, if your enemies are building lots of evasion, then you can have a higher um, rate to actually deal damage to them, and you have a defensive setting for your party actually really good for pvp here even if the value is low if you're like in mass pvp you would probably push it all to your party if you're like in a small scale you would probably go like this and push it all to yourself let me show you what it looks like in game and now we have the buff applied right here now let's talk a bit about salvation chain for everyone that has been running cave of destruction before and had a good staff player inside they often take it to carry noobs so for example if you're on the pillar you can use that skill to track someone to you on the pillar so he doesn't get um killed so this allows you to move party members to you it could make it so you're getting a shield and this shield is really interesting because this allows your mana to work as your health so while you're having that shield active your health will not be deducted unless your mana is to zero you will also have the option instead of moving someone to you that you are jumping to them and you have the option to decrease the cooldown next up is inferno wave this one will deal more damage the more burning is already applied on the enemy you can decrease the cooldown you can make it so it can be used up to two times but it only has a 50 percent chance and you can make it so if burning is applied you will add more burning stacks to it but let me show you first what it looks like and i will be using the serial fire bombs first so you can see that i'm applying some burning stacks and then we will follow up here and you see it's adding in an instant additional free stacks. For the frenzied lightning wave version, we will turn it into a 5 meter AOE if we are having the frost applied. So for example, if we are using the uh, ice spear and then we are applying it, you see we are having an AOE attack made out of it now. And you can see we got lucky our second activation hit so we could cast it twice now let's talk a little bit about chain lightning and do a little x course because as you have seen inferno wave required the enemy to be either like uh, having burn stacks already or being frosted and all of the elements that the uh, um, staff users have require certain setups so it will always be wrong to like a really high chance that if you're going like a fire mage build, you will not have the setups. If you're going ice only, you will not have the setups. Same goes for lightning. So you will actually want to mix up the different elements to take out the most damage and always get the setups ready for your skills. Otherwise your DPS overall will be really low. So chain lightning does more damage if burning is applied, but if they are also wet, 
the damage will decrease, but the um, cooldown will also decrease if you are wet. You can turn the single targets back that I will show you right now into an AoE. If you are using the guaranteed damage transfer, you see now it, it built up its chain. And if you're choosing chain damage, not mitigated up on transfer, the damage will not be reduced while it moves along. So this one is really strong. This one is nice if you're not able to get a Reliant setup going. And here you can turn it into an AoE even. The AoE has that nice effect that if you're attacking in a big clump of enemies, the same enemy can be hit by the AoE of one and also from the AoE of the other person like multiplying the damage onto a single person by a lot. Now let's go over Fireball Barrage. This one is another one where bonus damage um, is really good, like Chain Lightning as well. But this one here is really nice because the more burn you have applied onto your enemy, the more attacks it will actually generate on top. The more attacks you are generating, you are having the option to mana burn the enemy. So each Fireball you're casting is 100 mana. So if you see someone low on mana in PvP, you just throw it on him and he is basically useless. To showcase that skill, I have to apply some burn first. So I will cast some fireballs. And now we are going into the fireball barrage. And you see I casted the burn and it's like lots of lots of balls. And all of those balls will benefit from the bonus damage. All of them. Now let's go over the Icebound Tomb. This one is well known when you're farming dungeons and you, for example, have to break like a ring. You can make a monster hard CC by turning it into a frozen block. For some dungeons, this is actually a requirement to be able to complete some of the mechanics. But this is also valuable in PvP. You have the option to remove your freeze if you're feeling like it. You can also change it so it is binding nearby enemies. And you have the option that is applying the frost and it's reducing the evasion of the enemy. So a really nice AoE setup in large scale. And let me show you how this is in game so what you want to do is like you want to freeze the healer for example and bind the people around it so you can follow up and you are also reducing the defenses so let's say the middle dummy would be the uh, um, healer i froze that so he is useless and the other ones next to it are bind so your team can follow on it this is really nice in pvp so now let's go about judgment lightning this is a really high damage skill that has a chance to be used twice for every burning stack that is on the enemy you can also make it um, that they're adding a cast time and then you have to do it again i will show you in game but i think that feels like extremely clunky and you can use it again so you have the guaranteed damage transfer similar to my chain lightning and you can do it so it's not mitigated the same as chain lightning let me just show you the different versions. So I will apply a burn again with the um, fireballs. And now we are able to pop it onto the burn and you saw it just spread like this. So let's stack up some burn. And now if we are casting it, you see it has a bar. And then afterwards we can cast it instantly again. Now let's go over Infernal Meteor. This is the highest damage skill that the staff has, but it also has a quite long cooldown with almost um, 60 seconds. You can turn that, instead of having one big meteor, also in a small meteor that deals 332 damage. So in theory, that one is 830, and that one, if they would all hit the same person, would be up to 3k. You can also decrease the cooldown, and you can also make it so it's a viable tank killer by in decreasing the incoming heal. I will show you first what it looks like as the regular skill. You can see it's one big meteor that we have to cast for a while. So now we transfer it into the Hellfire Rain. And you will see here, this will be lots of um, small meteors. But they will also not be as centered anymore, so they are a little bit spread. For a large scale PvP, this is definitely the better option. And again, here you have the way to mitigate the bonus damage onto all of those 12 casts. So guys, this was it for the staff. If you haven't done so, there's already the same kind of video available for the crossbow, for the dagger and for the great sword. If you still have any questions, just let me know in the comments down below. I will answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.